the considerations for recording good vocals, apart from proper setup, we need to prevent the fight with the mic, the vocalist fight with the mic, and we're going to talk a lot about that. Stopping the fight with the mic requires you to have the right mic for your vocalist and to have the right monitor EQ compression and reverb settings during the recording session. So let's talk about this fight with the mic. I wrote a little article for you guys here in this presentation. We're going through the article with extras. If you want to revisit the article, it's there available for you to download in PDF format. Stopping the fight with the mic. Why don't I sound like myself through this mic? And this question plagues most vocalists. And this fight with the mic can lead vocalists to adjust their singing technique during a recording session, often leading to disastrous results and or endless overdubs. But, you know, singing is a, is a very kinesthetic thing. And say you learned to sing a song in a particular way. And then you find that in the recording studio, when you pop your headphones on your head and you sing, it's you have an out-of-body experience type thing because you don't sound anything like yourself um, through, uh, through your headphones. It's almost an automatic thing. It's an unconscious thing. They will and I know because I'm a vocalist, we will adjust our performance the way that we usually perform to try to sound like ourselves through the mic we're using. And of course, if you practice one thing one way over and over, the, the muscle memory is no longer there when you adjust your technique. And of course, this is going to cause problems uh, in the recording session. Your, your performance is not going to be uh, as good as if you were to hear yourself properly through your headphones during a recording session. So what causes this fight with the mic? Here's the problem. When you sing, you hear a mix of yourself through the air and bone conduction. So what vocalists hear is not what others hear and it's not what most microphones hear. What do vocalists hear? Well, actually, and, and this is not to make any vocalists in the group ultra self-conscious, but actually what you hear is better than what most people hear. The, the mix of what you hear through the air and bone conduction makes your voice sound richer to you in your head. And you're expecting to hear that sound when you pop headphones on your head during a recording session. And the reason you're not hearing that sound with most microphones is because that's not what you really sound like. So what's a vocalist to do? The solution is to find a recording mic that gives vocalists what they expect to hear. And this is not a quick and easy solution. And vocalists will need to experiment with many mics to find their mic. However, information can help vocalists narrow their search. So let's talk about high voices. High voices should start with large diaphragm condensers set to directional polar patterns that produce proximity effect. What are the directional polar patterns? Cardioid is one, figure eight, definitely. How about others in the cardioid family? There are two other ones in the cardioid family, supercardioid and hypercardioid. All of those are directional polar patterns and it's important to know your directional polar patterns because only these polar patterns can produce the thing called proximity effect. And this is very important uh, when recording vocals to be aware of proximity effect. So again, we're talking about high voices right now. Proximity effect can help warm up the voice, give it more depth, and perhaps approximate what is heard by the vocalist. Proximity effect is a bass boost produced when you sing within a foot, with less than a foot from a directional mic. That means, guys, that omni, omni mics cannot produce proximity effect. Only directional mics can. The narrower the polar pattern, the more bass boost you will get from the mic. So it also matters which directional pattern you're using. Okay, so for high voices, proximity effect can warm up the voice, give it more depth, and perhaps approximate what is heard by the vocalist. Proximity effect is a bass boost produced when you sing within a foot from a directional mic. The narrower the polar pattern, the more bass boost you will get from the mic. All right, so for example, you will get more bass boost when you use a mic set to figure eight with a 90 degree pickup angle than when you use a mic set to cardioid with a 130 degree pickup angle, okay? All right, okay, my high voice picks. So this is for those of you who's like, okay, I work with a, I work with a female vocal uh, all the time and she's always asking me, okay, what mic should I buy uh, for my voice and this? Okay, so I can give you some really, really good recommendations. 
Uh, my husband and I own this microphone. This is a Rode NTK tube condenser microphone with a cardioid pattern. This microphone is incredibly warm, it creates an incredibly warm and rich sound. And it's because of its tube electronics. Tube, transistor, and tape audio electronics excite harmonics in the sound source that you're picking up. So it can give you a really, really rich sound. I found that I would sound most like myself on this mic when I added some um, EQ and compression using a pre-sonus EQ and compressor module. I thought that this was my mic for a very, very long time. It's not an expensive mic either. I mean, considering um, the price range for high quality studio mics, this is around the, the, the $700 range. Now, I thought, again, I thought that the Rode NTK was my mic, but then I met this guy, the Neumann TLM-103. Um, this is a large diaphragm condenser that is set to a cardioid pattern. And Neumanns are known for their beautiful proximity effect. And so if you want lots of proximity effect, um, you want to go with Neumanns. I found that on this mic, I sound like myself without any signal processing whatsoever. And I've worked with a lot of female vocalists. I put them behind this thing and they're like, oh, this is great. This is great. I'm going to buy this mic. Uh, this mic is a little bit more pricey. It's in the $1,000 range. So definitely more expensive than the Rode NTK. But I found that most female vo vocalists with my type of voice, high kind of nasally type of voice, love the way they sound through the Neumann uh, microphone. And again, um, I want to clarify something. Yes, you can fix any sound through signal processing in the DAW. But what we're talking about now is not fixing a sound. We're talking about making a vocalist comfortable um, during a recording session, because when you get better performance, then the, the mixing process will just be so much easier and so much more enjoyable. So this is not about fixing a vocal. This is about getting the vocalist to hear themselves uh, through the mic that they're using in the recording session. This is about stopping the fight with the mic. This is the baby that I am using right now. And although most engineers will not turn to shotgun mics as the go-to for recording vocals in the studio, I've used it to record my sung voice at home because this guy effectively isolates me from the environment. Um, I can capture clean, warm vocals from home, all right, without having to do much audio cleanup later. How about ribbon mics? Because in the past, these were the go-to for recording vocals before condensers came onto the scene. The traditional ribbon mics, they are high frequency deficient. And when you place a vocal in front of it, it's going to warm up the vocal dramatically. You can achieve same sound through uh, more common, less expensive mics that are high frequency deficient. Okay, proximity effect considerations for all voices. Just a little detour here. Proximity effect can also cause unwanted pops. You can avoid popping by suspending a pop filter a few inches in front of the mic's diaphragm. This will stop the air from the plosives uh, going into the mic diaphragm. If you do not have a pop filter, there are other solutions for this. You can prevent pops by uh, turning on a low frequency roll off switch, either on the mic that you're using or uh, on the console that you're using. All right. Um, analog mixers have a 80 hertz low frequency roll off button often set up. So uh, you can either turn that on on the mixer. But if you bought a high uh, versatile, high quality um, large diaphragm condenser, a lot of those come with a low frequency roll off built in and that'll stop a lot of the pops. Now, there's something else you could do if you don't have either of those things. Um, you can simply on the audio track in your DAW itself where you're recording your vocals, place a high pass filter on that track and have it and set it to a roll off between 80 and 100 hertz. Uh, work with your vocalist to see when the pops stop. For some vocalists, an 80 hertz roll off will stop the pops. For other vocalists, you need to go a little bit further. That, those are two solutions for stopping the pops caused by proximity effect and plosives. Proximity effect can muddy up lower voices, taking away intelligibility and presence in a mix. Lower voices may benefit from microphones that produce little to no proximity effect. A large diaphragm condenser set to omnipolar pattern, because again, omni cannot produce proximity effect, can produce a crisp sound without proximity effect. However, 
Omni patterns are problematic when not recording in an acoustically controlled environment. So in this case, a large diaphragm condenser with a low frequency roll off set to a directional pattern like cardioid or using a vocal dynamic which has built in low frequency roll off filters and present speaks can be good alternatives that provide more separation from the environment. Here, you're looking at the Shure KSM44. This is my favorite mic for recording low male vocals. I found that in the studio, I've gotten the best effect from setting this guy on, uh, on Omni, you know, vocalist. And you're thinking, oh, well, just, just use a directional pattern and have the vocalist back up from the mic. You know, vocalists, a lot of vocalists like to be in the face of the mic. It's, it's just, that's the way they like to work with the microphone. And so um, rather than have the vocalist back away from the mic and, um, and perhaps and backing away from the mic can also uh, give the mic opportunity to capture more of the environment. So that's not so good. Um, I've gotten best results by using this guy set to an omnidirectional pattern and the vocalist could be right up in the face of the mic, right up against the pop filter, a few inches away from the mic and, and, and I'll still get a nice, crisp, clear sound without any muddiness because again, omni patterns do not produce proximity effect. So here's a little bit about the KSM44. It's a versatile, very versatile large diaphragm condenser. Um, this guy has switchable polar patterns. It has an attenuation pad. It has a low frequency roll off. And um, if you can only have one large diaphragm condenser in your mic cabinet, this may be the one uh, that you want to have or something like this, like the Audio-Technica 4050, which has the same features so that you account can accommodate as many vocalists as possible. So the KSM44 set to Omni will give you a crisp, clear and present low voice. You can also use it set to cardioid with the low frequency roll off turned, turned on and not turned off or set it to cardioid with the vocalist a foot or more away from the mic. Again, the last is not a very good solution. Most vocalists like to be up in the face of the mic um, and anything that a vocalist does to, um, to adjust their performance during a recording session, you know, do stuff that, they're, that they don't usually do, that's going to give you a bad performance. So I would go with the with the first two settings rather than the last two, rather than the last setup. All right. Okay, other low voice picks. Again, I mentioned the Audio-Technica 4050. It has the same features as the KSM44, except it's less expensive. So the KSM44 is, is like in the $1,000 range, whereas this guy here is like in the $500 range, uh, 500 to $700 range. And so, um, yeah, I've not, I've only used the Audio Technica 4050 in one recording session, so I I don't I've not used I've not used it on enough people to give you a good comparison as quality wise as how it compares to the KSM 44. But um, uh, I mean it has all the features of the KSM 44, and if you can't afford something like uh, the the KSM 44, I think it's a good alternative with the features it has built into it. So the Shure SM58, the go-to um, vocal mic for, for live sound. You know, dynamic mics are not going to give you as crisp and sparkly a sound as condenser mics. And it's because they're less sensitive. But if you're dealing with a vocalist, like a, a, a heavy rock vocalist, male vocalist, super loud, super aggressive, this, this guy can be very useful to you. Very, very useful to you. This is the Sennheiser MD-421. It's also a, a, a vocal, not a vocal dynamic, but a dynamic. I found that this guy gets rid of mud really, really well, way better than the uh, SM58. So um, if you're working with, again, a loud male vocal, like cr close proximity, something like a rock vocal, something that's really, really aggressive, um, this, the Sennheiser will surely help you get rid of mud better than the SM58. Out of experience, I know this. This is a very, very good um, uh, dynamic for recording male vocals. So those are my picks for low voices. All right. Okay. So until your vocalist finds their mic and purchases it and brings it with them to every recording session, and a lot of professional vocalists do this, you know, rather than depending on what's in the mic cabinet of the studio they're using, they buy their mic and take it with them wherever they go. Um, and, uh, so, but until a vocalist finds their mic and, and purchases it and brings it to every recording session, you can, you can take any available large diaphragm condenser and apply compression and or EQ in your DAW to simulate what they hear in their heads. You may also want to add a little reverb. Work with your vocalist to help you find favorable settings and don't worry when working in a DAW 
uh, you are not married to those compression, EQ, or reverb settings. The purpose of applying EQ and compression and reverb during the recording process is to help stop the fight with the mic and to get a good performance from your vocalist. And because you're working with plugins in the DAW, you're not married to those effects and you can change them later if you need to, to help the vocal sit well in the mix. Okay, so final takeaways from all this. For the vocalists in the group, how do you know when you found your mic? So if a mic gives you what you expect to hear through your headphones without inserting any compression or EQ, then you found your mic. Once you found it, then you need to buy it so that you can take it with you to every recording session. And yes, studio mics are expensive, but if you make many recordings, then it's an investment worth making. Recording engineers, this is for us. It may be useful to have a mic cabinet that includes a versatile large diaphragm condenser with switchable polar patterns and low frequency roll-off filter and a high quality vocal dynamic microphone. So um, if you can only afford to have a few mics in your cabinet, you'll at least want to have, you know, those two things so that you can accommodate as many vocalists as you can. But again, what we talked about today is EQ and compression for, for the comfort of the vocalist during the recording session, not so much EQ and compression for having it sit well in a mix. Okay, guys, have a very good day.